Welcome to session three, where we're going to talk about analyzing marketing data. This isn't just about crunching numbers. It's about extracting meaningful insights that can drive our marketing strategies and ultimately business growth. Let's start by breaking down the types of marketing data analysis. We've got four main categories. The first is descriptive analytics. This is the what happened of data analysis. It's about summarizing historical data to give us insights into past performance. For example, looking at last quarter sales figures or website traffic trends. The second is diagnostic analytics. This is the why did it happen phase. So here we're digging deeper into our descriptive data to understand the causes behind trends or anomalies. For instance, if we see a spike in website traffic, diagnostic analytics helps us understand if it was due to a successful marketing campaign or perhaps a viral social media post. Third is predictive analytics. Now we're moving into the what will happen territory. This involves using historical data and statistical algorithms to forecast future outcomes. For example, predicting which customers are most likely to churn or estimating future sales based on current trends. The fourth is prescriptive analytics. This is the holy grail of analytics, the how can we make it happen phase. It not only predicts future outcomes, but it also suggests actions to benefit from these predictions. For instance, not just predicting customer churn, but recommending specific actions to prevent it. So let's talk about key marketing metrics and KPIs. These are the vital signs of your marketing efforts. So return on investment, ROI, this measures the profitability of your marketing efforts. It's calculated by subtracting the marketing costs from the revenue generated, then dividing by the marketing costs. Customer lifetime value is another key metric. This predicts the total revenue a business can expect from a single customer account throughout the duration of the relationship, right? It's crucial for determining how much you should invest in acquiring and retaining customers. Third is customer acquisition cost, CAC, right? How much does it cost to acquire a new customer, including all of the marketing and sales expenses? Engagement rates are another key data point. These measure how actively involved your audience is with your content. This varies by social media platform. It varies by website structure. There's a lot of various language associated with engagement rates, which is why data normalization, which we talked about in the last session, is so key. This could be things like likes, shares, comments on social media, time spent on your website, etc. Conversion rates. This measures the percentage of your audience that takes a desired action, like making a new purchase or signing up for a newsletter. All of these key metrics, which were not exhaustive, but you can have an exhaustive list of pretty easily, are going to be presented in different ways because they mean different things. So what I wanna talk about next is data visualization and reporting best practices. It's great if your marketing team knows the data, but we all know that what's most important is that the CEO knows how successful marketing is being <laughs> because that's how we get our budgets, right? The key here is to make your data tell a story. Here are some strategies. First, when you're doing data visualization, you need to make sure that you're using the right visualization for the right data, right? Line charts for trends over time are great, but you wanna do something like a bar chart for comparison. You could use pie charts for compositions and scatter plots for relationships between variables. Choosing the right viz is key to getting the message across. Second, keep it simple. What you don't wanna do is get shiny object syndrome as soon as you start discovering Looker Studio, which I walked you through in a micro session, and overcrowd your visualizations. Each chart should really convey one main idea. You also wanna use color strategically. You wanna use consistent color coding and leverage color psychology to highlight important data points. It's also great that we now have the capability of creating interactive dashboards because different data points matter to different people on your team, including leaders. Interactivity allows users to drill down into the data they care about for more detailed insights. And I can't stress enough that in all of this, you should be telling a story with your data. Remember context, right? Don't just throw numbers at people. Are those numbers good? Or are they bad? What do they mean? That's the story. You need to explain what things mean and why the things that you're presenting matter. I want to talk a little bit now about segmentation and targeting based on data insights. 
So this is where we really start to leverage our data for personalized marketing. This is the first real application I'm going to present to you because it's the first and the simplest way probably to leverage even simple sets of data. We typically segment based on three main categories, right? Demographic, age, gender, income, education level, behavioral data. So this looks at customer actions like purchase history, brand interactions, how they behave online, and then psychographics. So this dives into the customer's attitude, interests, and lifestyle. So example, right? A clothing retailer could segment for customers based on age and gender, which is demographic, purchase frequency, behavioral, and fashion preferences, which would be psychographic. They could then create targeted marketing campaigns for each segment, like promoting trendy items to young fashion forward customers who shop frequently. Predictive analytics and machine learning are where you get this segmentation into a really sophisticated forward thinking model. This is where things get really exciting because we're using advanced algorithms to not just understand what happened, but to predict what will happen and optimize our marketing efforts accordingly. So here are some examples. First, you can use predictive analytics for things like churn prediction. Using historical customer data, you can identify patterns that indicate when a customer is likely to leave. This allows you to intervene with retention strategies before it's too late. Number two, you can do models for lifetime value estimation. So using machine learning models to predict how much revenue a customer will generate over their entire relationship with the business, that CAC, comes into play right? How much should you then be investing? It helps allocate marketing resources more efficiently towards the highest possible value customers. The next one is actually fairly novel, and it's a very exciting one that I think marketers are pretty keen on, and it's sentiment analysis. You can use natural language processing to analyze social media posts, reviews, customer service interactions to gauge the public opinion about your brand. AI will tell you what the general tone and tenor of an interaction is and then give you recommendations on what you should do or how you could more capably communicate with somebody in that frame of mind. Super cool. Fourth is content optimization. You can use AI, you can use data to analyze the content elements like headlines, images, or topics that perform best and then automatically optimize future content. The cool thing about using technology like this and using algorithmic based technology is you can evolve the rules over time to be more effective for you. The fifth way that predictive analytics and trending data is coming into play in marketing is programmatic advertising. So this is where you use machine learning algorithms to buy ad space in real time, optimizing for the best performance placements and audiences. Very little of ad strategy these days is a shot in the dark. There are expansive data sets that can help you be incredibly precise and improve your ROAS. Finally, let's touch on some tools and technologies for marketing data analysis. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're going to use, and we'll go more into this in the micro session, but let's break it down kind of by type. So if we're thinking first about analytics platforms, we're thinking about platforms like Google Analytics, Adobe Analytics, Mixpanel, things like that. For business intelligence tools, BI may or may not be close to marketing in your organizational structure, but the BI tools that you may want to think about looking into are things like Looker, things like Tableau, things like Power BI. There are also data science libraries like Python's Pandas and Scikit-Learn, R's Tidyverse. I don't know what these are, but a data scientist will. <laughs> Machine learning platforms like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Amazon SageMaker are things that are going to help you create the algorithmic engine that I mentioned a minute ago, where you can ultimately architect your own rules that drive predictive analytics for ongoing optimization. And then marketing specific tools. These are probably the ones that you're already familiar with. Salesforce, Marketing Cloud, HubSpot, Mercado, your CMS, your CRM, all of these are chock full of opportunities to gather and use data well. The key is not just to have these tools, right, but to integrate them effectively into your marketing workflow. It's about creating a data ecosystem where insights can flow freely and inform decision making at every level. In practice, this might look like using Google Analytics to track website performance, feeding that data into a BI tool like Tableau for visualization, and then using Python to build predictive models based on that data. 
then you could push those insights back into your marketing automation platform to optimize campaigns in real time. It would be a nice, tidy loop. Let's look at a concrete example of how all that comes together. Imagine you're running an e-commerce store. You start with a descriptive analytics, looking at your sales data over the past year, you notice that sales have been declining over the past quarter. So then you move into diagnostic analytics, digging deeper into the data. What's going on? You discover that while overall traffic has remained steady, your conversion rate has dropped, particularly among customers who were previously frequent buyers. Now you apply predictive analytics. You use a machine learning model to predict which of your current customers are most likely to churn based on their recent behavior patterns. So you're marrying that historical and pushing it into the predictive based on the pattern recognition. Finally, you could leverage prescriptive analytics. What are we gonna do about it, right? Your model not only predicts which customers might churn, but it could also suggest personalized offers most likely to retain each customer based on their purchase history and browsing behavior. You segment these at-risk customers and create targeted email campaigns with personalized offers. You use A-B testing to optimize your email subject lines and content. You track the results in real time, adjusting your strategy as you go. This is data-driven marketing in action. It's not just about collecting data or running analyses. It's about creating a continuous cycle of insight and action that drives real business results. As we wrap up this session, remember that the goal of all this analysis isn't just to generate reports or pretty charts, it's to drive better decision-making and ultimately to create more value for your customers and for your business. The companies that will thrive in the future of marketing are those that can not only collect and analyze data effectively, but also translate those insights into meaningful action. In our next session, we'll explore how to apply these data insights to create and optimize marketing strategies. But for now, I want you to start thinking about your current analytical processes. Where are the gaps? Where could you be leveraging more advanced analytics? And most importantly, how can you ensure that the insights you're generating actually